Hello all! Rick here, looking into a technology from Star Trek that is foundational to the series and science fiction in general. Deflector shielding. Before we start, there is a pretty good video from Kyle Hill, back from his time in the Nerdist channel, that covers how the shielding might work on a level based in real science, and he does a great job of explaining that better than me. In essence, it's magnetic fields encased in a plasma sheath, kind of like the Earth's ionosphere. However, that has several caveats, one of which he mentions at the end of the video that it would do nothing to stop a physical torpedo, only deflecting energy weapons. Unfortunately, deflector shielding in Star Trek relies a lot more on technobabble, although the premise of creating an artificial ionosphere could still be part of the process. I want to do a video breaking down the believability of Star Trek technology at some point soon too, but for today, it's just the deflector shielding used by Starfleet. So, when starships first launched from Earth, they had no such energy shielding, and instead relied on radiation-proof hull plating and a method of polarisation into the hull to disrupt the charge of incoming energy weapons. Navigational deflectors were a thing for as long as warp drive was, but are slightly different technologies and not powerful enough to deflect fire. Additionally, the Starfleet lacked force field technology as it was in the 23rd century, instead using stable electromagnetic barriers, but these precursors lacked the strength and variability in shape and density, and it was not advanced enough for much use, let alone starship defence. In essence, as this technology improved, it was deployed to ship scales through a networked grid of emitters, with the main deflector array often being a primary shield emitter, but that had other purposes beyond this. This was a feat Starfleet knew was possible considering they had encountered other ships of the time with this technology, Vulcans being one of them. The shield grid was separated into multiple areas of protection, forward, aft, port, starboard, dorsal and ventral. Common but not the only array layout. Power and integrity could be depleted from one section and reinforced to another. Overall, there was a limited amount of power available that, while rechargeable, would be depleted when constant duress was applied. When shields were raised, no matter nor energy could pass through them in theory. Although there are notable exceptions, such as certain phases of polaron beams and many stellar radiations. A starship was able to fire through its own shields by matching the frequency of its phaser arrays with the refresh rate of its shielding, effectively firing a beam through the shielding. This is why if a vessel's shield frequency is deduced, an enemy vessel can fire through it, using the vessel's own immunity against it. The Borg were known to be able to do this rapidly, and to a lesser extent, this applies to transporter beams too. However, it seems less common to beam through shielding, so there must be some factor at play that makes this still a danger. Shielding was incredibly modular, and the shape of shielding could be adapted from hugging the hull to extending to a bubble and even beyond, encasing other objects although this weakened the overall integrity proportionally. The composition of shielding 2 could be altered, with the most basic adaptation being the changing of the frequencies, possibly creating a barrier that was more effective against certain weapons. Let's face it though, this seldom worked, but it was the easiest thing to try, so you might as well. On top of this, different particles, radiations or energies could be diffused into the shielding for separate effects, and shielding could even feed off of certain energies to cycle the power back into the shield grid. I think this ability is effectively dialed up on metaphasic shielding, and its versatility is what differentiates it from standard Starfleet shields. So, as to how they actually work in the lore? Well, it's a little vague. As force fields, we know that they form a magnetic sheath to maintain the shape of the shielding, and that in its own way would add a layer of protection from certain cosmic phenomena and sort of mitigate some energy and particle weapons. However, the main component, the missing ingredient from Starfleet deflector shielding that they lacked in the 22nd century, was the use of graviton particles to manipulate the field's integrity 
and shape. This is where the techno babble has to take over because it's the use of these gravitons that allows for a layer of distortion to be created and it's this that intercepts and deflects matter and energy trying to pass through it. Picture a ship attempting to sail through a maelstrom. The ship is the incoming fire and the maelstrom is a localised area of contained chaos that severely messes up the course of a sail ship and will divert its course. This is kind of what the deflectors do, as a stream of particles impacts this contained barrier of distorted energy, it is deflected away into differing vectors than intended and works on most things from matter to light, considering the space-time warping effects of gravitons. Looking at the complexity of shielding then, it's no wonder that Starfleet development of this lagged behind even warp drive. And it's kind of impressive to see that Starfleet shields, as we see them in the 24th century, are the product of multiple innovations. Artificial gravity would have had helped define control over graviton particles. Force field technology was of course a key component, and navigational deflectors provided the setup to utilise this technology. Still, with the power levels behind Star Trek weaponry, it's undisputed that something more than hull plating is needed to protect against disruptors and photon torpedoes. The deflector shielding was something that needed to happen, and an area of science in Star Trek that is adaptable and as versatile as the shielding itself. Thanks for watching this breakdown of deflector shielding in Star Trek. To be clear, the only things we know from canon with 100% certainty is that gravitons are involved and that it's based on force field technology creating localised areas of disruption. But I hope this video adds some context and at least conveys a decent theory. Thanks again. I've been Rick, and goodbye.